You're watching The Roach on Florida TV. So her working with that whale was mm-hmm. not an unusual at all. Tilly at all was not unusual for her to be with. Oh, no. Whatsoever. And my husband and I both had worked with Tilly, I mean, hundreds of times. Yeah. I mean, um, same scenario, same thing. And um, and I don't know if a lot of people know. So I just want to give you a little bit of a background about Tilikum. So um, Tilikum was a whale. He was different than the other whales. When he came to our facility, the decision was made to not do water work with him. So what that means is, is that we didn't swim in the water with Tilikum. And when you got a job at Shamu Stadium, um, coming in through the door, right, your first day on the job, you are told about Tilly, his background, the fact that we don't get in the water with him, that we have special rules and regulations about him. Right. Um, very responsible about being upfront, what the expectations were, what the risks were. Um, and um, so your first day in, you you knew that. So I, one thing I didn't think a lot of people knew was that he is different, was different than the other killer whales because SeaWorld made a conscious decision to not choose to do water work with him um, for various reasons. But that doesn't mean that we didn't practice, I mean, safety scenarios, running through training sessions on what would happen if somebody ever got into the water sure, with him. Sure, of course. And so um, I feel like SeaWorld did a phenomenal job of training us in case of an emergency. Right. You know, so. Um, yeah, you plan, you try to plan for every eventuality. Absolutely. You try to go through different scenarios. Yep. It's impossible to go through everyone because every scenario is right. different. Right. So right. it is uh, differ, difficult to um, figure out, um, you know, what, what situation you might ru- run into, but you try to practice as many different things as possible. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I think that, you know, um, when, you, when you're working with animals in general, whether you're working with dogs, whether you're working, I don't care what animal. I mean, my hamster. Screw dogs. My hamster. There are pe- I know. Think of people you work I with know. in an office. There are bosses, there are uh, employees that you will work with. Oh, I wouldn't go talk to him. Right. Oh, no, 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 no. We all just ignore him. We just, yeah, just just go give him the papers, put him on his desk, and then just walk. No, 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 don't start a conversation. Right, right. I mean, life is like that. Right, exactly. And um, it accidents happen. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the truth behind it. And um, it truly was a, a, a tragic accident. And um, why do you think people don't like to it just I, I'm, I'm a believer of that in, in so many aspects. Everybody, we become in such a litigious uh, society. It's weird to me. And I'll say this to people. It's just, it, you know, not not even this subject, but whatever. It's just an accident. Bad things sometimes happen. And it seems like we don't. We always want to blame someone or something for everything that occurs in life these days. I don't Is that know. Not the truth. Isn't it weird? Yeah, I yeah. think it's really weird. Um, in all honesty, I think that there are a group of people in this world that they don't want to see animals under the care of humans in captivity, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, and this was a platform. You know, it was used as a platform for an agenda. And, you know, we see that all the time with different things, you know, and it's unfortunate um, because, uh, you know, an accident doesn't mean an end to an industry. Right. You know, or a modification necessarily. I mean, I just, um, yeah, I, I'm. It's hard to talk about. Yeah. Because it's hard to, I'm not exactly the most eloquent always in putting my my words together and how I want to express it, you know? Well, I'll I'll tell you my feelings. When Thad was in here, I was very honest to to him about, we were talking about marine parks and uh, animals in captivity. And, you know, here here is my my feelings and see if you share these, you know. um, Should should killer whales be at SeaWorld? My feeling is, I swear to God, I'm, I'm, I'm so, on one hand I go, well, it is kind of a pool. There's not a lot of room. They don't swim for miles. Okay. But then I also think of all the good work SeaWorld has done over these years. Hang on. And <laughs> and and because of their introduction to all of us about killer whales, we actually 
care about these creatures. When I was a little kid, all they did was slaughter whales. <laughs> That's all they, and to, to this day, the Russians kill lots and lots of whales, okay? And, and a lot of other uh, uh, people do too. But anyways, my thoughts on it are, are so mixed in the sense of, thank goodness that SeaWorld has brought us to a level where we care about these creatures, dolphins, whales, walruses, uh, sea otters, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. It's because of them we do care. And then I also look and I go, well, without just a couple of whales being here, I, I, I don't think we would care. So these things live good lives. You can, you can, I, I feel they do. They're not, they're very spoiled lives that they live in here. I agree. They're not swimming for miles, just like an elephant that's in a zoo doesn't get to run like a crazy elephant across the Serengeti. I, I understand that argument. But I think there's a lot of good that comes from it. So, so let me try to shift shift your thinking just a little bit with this with this thought. People, a lot of people want to go down that road of the, um, it's a it's a pool. Um, it doesn't. They can't swim for miles. They can't. Okay. So here's the the truth of the matter. Okay. Right. Um, any industry evolves. Right. So in the beginning, were animals taken from the wild? Yes. Um, did we used to do lobotomies? Yes. Okay. Everything morphs and changes. When you know better, you do better. Okay. The animals that are under the care at, at SeaWorld, now I can't, I'm not gonna speak for every facility, okay? But their lives are different. They're different than the wild, but different doesn't mean bad. And the thing is, is that I think that people discredit the fact that our job as animal trainers, okay, you see my passion, you see that I'm like, um, I love the animals, they bring this to me, they bring, my job, my actual job as an animal trainer, my first and foremost number one job is to enrich their lives physically, mentally, okay? That is my job, and to enrich them. If, if I'm not doing that, then shame on me. So in saying that, we, all of the sessions that I was talking about earlier, the training sessions, the playtime sessions, the relate sessions, those are there to mentally and physically stimulate the animals and to enrich their lives. Right. That is our number one job. And the industry, the park that I worked for and when I was there and what I'm speaking for, we did it to the utmost. And so for people to, if, if somebody else wants to say that that's not what they did when they were there or that's not their experience, then shame on them. My experience and the team that I was around we did that. And so by doing that, right, it, it's a different life. It's not a bad life. Right. It's just different. Animals in the wild, they're searching for food. It's a struggle. They're, it is a struggle. And it's a, di it's a, it's a different life. People right. want to think that the wild is so, um, oh, you know, unicorns and balloons and that's not how it is yeah just ask and a so, uh, ask a gazelle how it's like it right. is like living in the wild so you know people want to focus on oh well the the whales and the pool so small don't you think we take into account i mean we're experts in the field we right. realize what it takes to have these animals thrive that's why we had the most successful breeding program in the world with killer whales and i'll tell you one thing as a top part of the ocean killer whales are not going to breed if they do not feel safe, comfortable, you know, they're not going to breed. And um, so I always remind people that you're right. Th this isn't the wild. But just because it's not the wild doesn't mean that it's that doesn't mean that it's bad. And the idea is, again, I think as humans, it is our responsibility to allow people most people in the world will never get to see animals like this out in the wild. Never. Right. And um, as the his, um, and I hope I say his name right, but I believe it's Baba Diam. He they used to have a thing on the side of SeaWorld that says, um, "In the end, you will conserve only what you love, you will love only what you understand, and you will understand only what you're taught." And the bottom line is, is that I have seen. I cannot even tell you the number of lives changed, people's hearts, the way when you make a connection, when you see something and you're close and it makes you want to go out and do something. And when you're touched like that, and people, you can't deny that. People can't deny it. When you go in, that's our, our innate, in my opinion, I mean, I'm not trying to get all faith-based and stuff, but it's our connection to God that makes our have a connection to nature. There, You cannot deny that that's there. And so I... I understand and I hear when people say that, um, but I think it's kind of naive. 
Right. I think it's a naive statement when you say about, you know, well, the pools are smaller. Right. Get more information about what we're doing behind the scenes and what we really bring to their lives before you make people make that judgment. You know. No, I, I, I think you're right. And, and that's I think I've kind of felt split on the issue and I just kind of deeply feel there's more good that comes out of it. Oh, my gosh. Don't you think? Don't I think? Yes. I mean, it's not even there's not even a question. I mean, I that's like to me, it's like saying, you know, um, should I not have my my dog? Right. Right. Well, I've, I've I had that I had that discussion with that. And, and, and we're all such hypocrites, because if we all feel that, then, hey, let your dog go out in the in the wild. Let your cat go. Let right. your your and, pet your pet bird go. And, and we could go on and on because really. You're doing the same thing then, aren't you? And in, and and again, it's it's a work in progress, right? We, right. When you know better, you do better. Is every zoo and facility um, at the same place in life? No, but nothing is. We live in a fallen world. Yeah. That's that's the thing. It's not a perfect world. And um, but I know that the place that I was a part of, and I know the care. You know, a lot of people see the videos of the shows. They'll see the videos of us next to the whales, or be you know. Eh, you know, yeah. all this stuff, but our actual, like I was saying, our actual job that people don't understand, it's not to make ourselves look good. It's not to go out there and showcase, you know, hey, look at us. Or it's about the welfare of those animals. Right. And I go back, I mean, Dawn, perfect example, number one advocate. I mean, on top of, you know, being number one about their welfare, their care. I mean, that's why we're there. Because we and we know the importance of that. We don't take that for granted. No more roach on Florida TV.